forever lasted three years, five months, and twenty days. Michael's quiet predictable existence started turning two weeks earlier. My name is Mark, and my wife of three and a half years is Carly. We met at a career days event while I was earning my master's, she was extolling the virtues of the company she worked for. My degree and her company weren't a match, but we were. After a few cookie cutter dates, things caught fire, the karma was there. She was six months removed from an engagement and I had been playing the field for the last two years. We spent most of my free time together, she was working a salary position, and I was knee deep working on my thesis we were both fairly conservative when it came to starting to have sex, but once it started, there was no doubt we belonged together, we were married this summer after I graduated. We profess that our love would last forever, I landed a job geographically close enough to allow Carly to keep her job. I work in network solutions for a company based in northern Indiana, I'm a project manager and have a dozen people reporting to me. When we do a major client setup, a group of four or five of us will travel to the customer site for upwards of a week, I don't decide who travels. We have a group of project managers and my boss dentist to make those decisions. We try to make sure everyone gets their feet with doing on-site installs. This time, I had two guys and three women all had at least one on-site install in their background. At age 27, my master's degree was paying big dividends. All but one of this crew were older than me. This client had been difficult to work with, so the maturity of the crew would almost certainly be an asset. It didn't take too long for the first angry encounter. We arrived at 8 a.m., had the introductory meeting, and then started implementing our solution. It was mid-morning when their so-called expert lost his temper with Leanne, one of my more qualified people. Along with their site manager, I helped fuse the situation. Leanne was visibly shaken. I took her to the coffee room to give her a little time to recoup. After about 15 minutes, she returned to her desk. Unfortunately, this whole scene would repeat itself shortly after lunch. The resident expert was sent home for the day. I tried for a half hour to get Leanne calmed down, but in the end, I sent her back to the hotel. Leanne joined the team for dinner afterward. I told them I was going to run around the park by the hotel and invited any or all to join me. Leanne was the only one to accept. We really didn't say much while we jogged until she broke the ice, her voice was more pleasant than usual, you know, we could run away and live happily ever after go lay on the beach and enjoy ourselves. What brings that on, Leanne? Well, you know, just up and go, leave everything behind, Leanne. Let's not go there. You know, the company policy about managers and those they manage okay, I sat in my room quite dumbfounded by that discussion. I talked with Carly but didn't bring up Leanne's actions, Leanne had always been less than pleased that I was her superior. You know, the little snipes, the rolling of eyes, all the body language that indicates a lack of respect, I didn't know where today's conversation had come from. In the morning. I approached Leanne. Things okay today, quite currently, I am fine, Mark. Thankfully, it was an uneventful day. The expert expressed his doubts about what we were installing, but he didn't lose his temper. My team and I had dinner again while waiting for a food, a guest friend ran into a server knocking the tray of food to the floor. The guest was a jerk yelling and screaming. After dinner, I jogged by myself. I talked with Carly then turned on the 10 p.m. news. I heard a knock on my door. I opened it to find Leanne with her coat on. Hi, Leanne. Everything alright? The tone of her voice was different. Just wanted to show you something you might like. She proceeded to unbutton her coat and displayed her naked body to me. Leanne cover up. Thanks for the offer, but no. 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 Go back to your room. I'll see you in the morning. She gave me a mock sad look then smiled okay. Bye bye. I decided I needed to alert Dennis. I sent an email requesting a moment of his time to talk privately about Leanne. That email would turn out to be very valuable. In the morning, I approach Leanne. Things okay today, 
quite curtly, I'm fine, Mark. She's good at what she does, but her behavior was nothing short of bizarre. Dennis responded to my email later in the day that he would try to get with me when I returned. Nothing unusual the rest of the trip. Back home, Liam was just as brusque as she'd always been. I hoped whatever caused those two nights of strange weirdness in the past was over. Stupid me. Sunday evening, I received a text from Leanne. That was the best sex I've ever had, lots of love struck emoji. I hadn't seen Leanne since our plane landed on Friday evening, she must have mistakenly chosen my phone number when sending her lover a text. I did not respond. I would talk with her in the morning. The thought of Leanne with a lover was hard for me to imagine just saying, but the same could easily be said about me. Leanne, I think you mistakenly sent me a text last night. Quite currently, Mark, I didn't send anyone a text message last night. I didn't press the issue, she was knee-deep debugging a problem. I had a very busy day myself. Tuesday night, I received a sexting message from Leanne complete with a naked selfie. Could the sex with you get any better? I don't think so. With more of those love bird moans, I sent another email to Dennis reminding him of my attempt to have a private conversation with him. He replied and apologized for not getting back to me. However, he put me off until next Monday as he was out of town. Leanne called in sick on Wednesday. I would have to wait a day to confront her. My day was about as average as it had ever been. I really didn't expect it when someone called my name and as I was getting into my car, whatever I got hit with was sufficient to knock me out. I awoke as the police took my statement and brought me up to date. Apparently, Terry Leanne's husband had decided that I was having an affair with Leanne. He did an excellent job of beating the hell out of me. I had a concussion, two broken ribs, a hernia, and a broken hand. My face was heavily bandaged. Terry had left copies of Leanne's text and sexting picture with my unconscious body. The photo had been colored with a black marker to hide the face, tits, and, unfortunately, he had delivered the same copies to Carly. Carly answered her phone the first time I called. She hoped I would die a painful death. The hospital kept me overnight for observation and Carly would not answer her phone. On Thursday, I took a cab back to my car then drove home and stayed there. Carly wouldn't talk to me when she got home. Rather than starved, I had a pizza delivered. On Friday, I went into the office even though my side was killing me. Mid-afternoon, I was told that I had been placed on paid leave. Apparently, Terry had filed a complaint. My hearing would be Monday when Dennis returned. When I made it home, I found Carly dressed like a, where are you going dressed like that? I wasn't expecting you home so soon. I left you a note. I have a date. Carly, don't do this. There's no going back if you do. Oh, I see you can around and I can't. Show me your proof. I haven't done a damn thing wrong. I suppose her jealous husband beat the shit out of you as a warning to quit flirting. He has mistaken me for someone else. I have not done one thing that would jeopardize our marriage. I've seen the text and her picture. Looks like you're not as innocent as you say. Do you see me responding to any of them? Did you find any emails from me? Do you have any photos? I know those answers. No. There aren't any to be found. I am completely innocent. I don't believe. Leave it. I may or may not be back tonight. I wouldn't wait up for me. Don't do this. I'm warning you. Deal with it, Mark. And with that, my wife tipped the first domino over to end her marriage. She had a date with someone she worked with. It was her idea of revenge for what she thought I had done. Her note said basically the same thing she had just said. I was pawn scum and she intended to have some fun too. After a heated exchange, I laid down trying to get comfortable. It didn't work. I left a note for Carly. Something is really wrong. I'm headed to the air. It's 6 p.m. Friday. Tests revealed I had a ruptured spleen. I listed my brother as my emergency contact. They operated stitched the spleen and then zipped me back together. I awoke to the sound of beats and humps. 
I drifted into and out of lucidity until I was greeted with a sun-filled room after eating their suggested diet, I sat pondering my situation that confusion was interrupted by my cell phone buzzing. I didn't recognize the number, but answered it anyway. You're one dumb, I thought you were smarter than that, but, no, you had to get it on with her again last night, Carrie, you've got the wrong person. I'm in the hospital and have been since 6 p.m. last night. Silence, Terry, you still there? I went to the gym at 8 p.m. last night, I was only gone for an hour. Her text message to you this morning talked about the great six you two had. Terry, I was on the operating table. I'm still here. Room 612 at University Hospital, I'm not going anywhere today. I have to get to the bottom of this. I'll see you in a bit. I checked and found the text from Leanne the sex last night was so good the floor nurse dropped by to check my vitals and change my trip. I felt like asking her for something to end this nightmare. She left, but said she would be back in a bit to change my dressings. No sooner had the nurse left when Carly entered my room. She was still dressed like a mark. I saw your note. Are you okay? I'm fine. You can leave. I don't want you around, Mark, don't say that. I was worried about you and came right here when I read your note, that means you ended our marriage by staying out all night. Leave just get out. My voice had risen to the point that the floor nurse stuck her head in and asked if everything was alright. I asked her to escort Carly out of my room. Carly became belligerent. Security escorted Carly out. I was trying to make sense of what Leanne was doing to me, revenge for what? Turning her down? Being her boss? It had to be. She thought my phone number was for someone else, nothing else made any sense. Carly called my cell. What didn't you understand? Her marriage is over, leave me alone, Mark. That's you around, and now you're all high and mighty. That's where you're wrong, Carly, I didn't around. You did. We're done. Leave me alone. I hung up. She sent a text message, we need to talk. No. We don't. Move your stuff out or set my stuff by the door, I thought we were soulmates. Is that what you thought when you were having your revenge, is that what you thought when you were your bimbo? I didn't need this. I turned my cell phone off, give me more fiend, please. Just before lunch. The nurse came back to change my dressing, she started with my face. Terry and Leanne knocked and asked if they could come in. Oh my god, Mark, what happened to you? Hi, Leanne. I was mugged leaving work on Wednesday, this must be your husband, Terry, isn't it? What happened to your lip? Diverting her eyes, I ran into a door. Where did it happen? Who did it? Did they arrest them? It was in the employee parking lot. I don't know what the status of the investigation is at this point. Last night, they discovered I had a ruptured spleen. Nothing serious. Just a few stitches fixed the problem. I knew it was Terry who had inflicted my injuries, so did the police. Apparently, Terry had withheld from Leanne his encounter with the police. The nurse was finished with my face and asked if I wanted my company to leave while she did the spleen surgery dressings. I said no. Let them stay. The nurse needed something so she left saying she would return shortly. Leanne sat on the chair and Terry tried to start a conversation. Mark, I just don't know what's going on. None of this makes any sense. Tell me about it, come here for a minute. Terry came closer as I whispered. Leanne was acting very oddly on the last road trip, has she been under pressure recently? Whispering back, her mother died in a car crash last Christmas, and her sister just started chemo for breast cancer. She seems to be dealing with it okay. The nurse returned so Terry backed up against the wall. It got quiet in the room. Carly stormed in and started yelling at me and Leanne. The nurse called security and Terry restrained Carly until security arrived. After the peace and quiet was restored, the nurse continued her work. Leon got up and stood close enough to hold my hand. Last night was awesome, we need to go to that beach again, the sex with you is so good, 
Leanne said, Terry, myself, and the attending nurse stared in disbelief. The nurse looked at Terry and said, don't let her leave. I'll be right back. Terry wed Leanne in a hug. I'm so sorry he mumbled. After about five minutes, the nurse and a pair of doctors escorted Terry and Leanne from the room. I had all afternoon to replay the entire two weeks. There were two very differently and personalities. It was several hours later when Terry returned. He was very apologetic. He asked me about her odd behavior. When I told him of the angry encounter, he lit up. I'll be right back, he said. He returned with the doctor. I repeated my story. Terry began, Mark, when Leanne was a child, she was mentally abused quite severely. Her father was relentless in his verbal mistreatment of her. She has been in the midst of a nervous breakdown since last week's encounter. You said she did something strange the day after her work encounter. Was there any conflict involving her that day? I said no, but then thought about the guest and the tray while we were eating dinner. A guest had an angry encounter with the waitstaff. The doctor joined, and that would do it. She has what we call the associative identity disorder. Basically, she has dual personalities. It is usually a reaction to trauma as a way to help a person avoid bad memories. You must have been the person who interceded on her behalf. You made an imprint on her fantasy personality, the doctor explained. So what about Sunday Tuesday? Did something go on those days? Terry offered, she backed into the lawnmower on Sunday. I yelled at her for being so careless. I found her text to you on Tuesday. We had an angry encounter. The more she denied, the angrier I got. I finally left the house and didn't return until after midnight. How about last night? We had a knockdown fight again. She was upset that I had filed a complaint against you. She was still denying an affair and that just pissed the hell out of me. I can't tell you how bad I feel for you. You did nothing wrong and I've made a mess of your life Terry said. Knowing what we know now, I can't say I blame you doc. What can you do for Leanne? I asked, very little. She needs extensive counseling to help her understand what's happened to her. People get over it. It just takes time. I need to get going, but feel free to ask for me if you have any other questions the doctor explained. Terry apologized again and left. Even though she had turned my life upside down, I really did feel sorry for Leanne. They informed me that I would likely be released by noon on Sunday if I had an uneventful evening. I sent an email to Dennis asking him to please contact Terry as there had been some pertinent developments. I scrolled through the text messages from Carly a whole lot of anger being vented towards me. It saddened me to think that the strange set of circumstances had ended my marriage. I played the voicemails, but her attempts to justify her actions only fueled my anger. They all hit the trash can on Sunday. I drove back to find my house as I had left it. Carly had not moved out and my stuff was still there. I started packing what I thought I'd need for the next week. Dennis called around 3 p.m. and asked if he could drop by. He said everyone was convinced I was not at fault and had done nothing wrong. My attempts to talk to him about Leanne along with Terry explaining her medical issue had satisfied all of higher management's concerns. I was reinstated, and this would be expunged from my employment history. Leanne had been placed on unpaid leave. I had just placed the last sack in my car when Carly pulled into the driveway. So like some chicken, you're just going to turn and run? What a Carly, I thought. Leanne had a nervous breakdown. Nothing she alleged ever occurred. She's under observation at university. You should talk to Terry to confirm what I'm seeing. I'm cutting my losses I'm going to start over with someone who I hope thinks before she acts. I thought that was you. I couldn't have been more wrong, thanks for the good times, but I really never want to see or hear from you again, Mark. Don't go, she made it up Carly pleaded. How was I supposed to know Mark? Please don't go, Carly, it doesn't work that way. I don't plan on spending the next 40 years worried if whatever I've done the day is enough for you to go to the bar and hook up with whoever happens to be there. I won't stay married to a woman who uses her cunning as a weapon of revenge. Mark? No, 
This is just a big misunderstanding. We can get by this. Don't go. I'm sorry. Please, Carly begged. I shook my head and closed my car door. She's convinced we can get past this misunderstanding. Are you kidding me? A misunderstanding? The tone of the text and voice mails had certainly changed. Apparently, she thought I would get over this in a few days. My hopes for an amicable divorce were not to be. We have no kids, no pots of gold to divide, yet the judge orders two months of weekly counseling sessions. Apparently, Carly saying she didn't want a divorce was the reason behind this roadblock. As much as I wanted to skip them, I certainly didn't need any blemishes on my reputation. The first session ended badly. The counselor tried to divide and conquer. I sat in an empty conference room while Carly stated her case. Then we swapped chairs. Mark, tell me how you feel the counselor asked how do I feel? Pretty simple. I won't stay married to a woman who uses her cunning as a weapon of revenge. Game over, good night, doc, I replied. Mark, you realize she thought you had cheated? That diploma on the wall, did you find it in a box of cereal? What part of what I just said didn't you understand? Insults don't help us resolve this, Mark, I know you're angry, but you have several years together. Do you still love her? I love who I thought she was. Do I love who she turned out to be? No. Are we done? She do to regain your trust? I wanna stay married to a woman who uses her as a weapon of revenge. You've already said that. I wouldn't stay married to a woman who uses her cunning as a weapon of revenge. Is that all you're going to say? I wouldn't stay married to a woman who uses her cunning as a weapon of revenge. Mark it's obvious you're not going to cooperate. Let's call it a night and try again next week. Carly tried to stop me from leaving, but I brushed her hand away and left. Was I childish? You bet. Would I ever consider taking her back? Not a chance. I'm 27 and hope to be married for 50 years. She exposed how vindictive she could be with just someone's accusation. Round 2 went about as well as round 1. Mark, would you like to start doc? What do I have to do to satisfy the court order? You have to attend these sessions. It would help both of you if you tried to understand each other's feelings, but I don't have to try. Do I Mark? You should try okay, Carly. I wanna stay married to a woman who uses her cunning as a weapon of revenge. You two can talk about whatever you want until I can leave. You're acting very childish, Mark. Insults don't help us resolve this stock. I know you're angry. Do you still love your job, Carly? Why don't you tell Mark your feelings? I stared at the counselor and hummed song I had heard on my way over. I couldn't quite drown out Carly's attempt to cleanse her soul, but I did a pretty good job of it. I waited until the counselor's lips moved. If I read her lips right, it started with Mark, sorry, Doc, what did you say? I said, what do you feel about what Carrie has said? I would stay married to a woman who uses her cunning as a weapon of revenge. I heard the subs and watched the counselor putting her notes away. My attorney called the next day and said we needed to appear before the judge. Your Honor, my client has attended the sessions as ordered. He has no desire to stay married. There's nothing the counselor can say or do to change that. There's nothing his wife can say or do to change that. The counselor has indicated he's not being cooperative yet the court, and the counselor refused to listen to what my client is saying. Pouring water on the ashes where the bridge used to be would rebuild the bridge. Please grant the petition. Thank you. That's why I paid him the big bucks. Petition granted. I must be some kind of lightning rod for certain kind of woman. Carly was turning out to be as crazy as Leanne. She would wait for me after work. She would run into me at the grocery store. I would never give her the satisfaction of explaining her actions. Her text messages invited me out on dates no matter what I said or did she persisted. I finally found something to slow her down. I responded to her offer to go out on a date. Carly, my new wife would appreciate your not communicating with me anymore. Have a great life, Mark. That seemed to do the trick for a week. You're not married? I didn't say I was, 
but when I do find my new wife, that's what she will say, please move on. I have well, that hasn't stopped her. I have no doubt she will complicate my attempts to find another woman. I'm trying to date again, it might be hard for some to imagine me with a lover. With that said, the dating scene isn't something I excel at. I love I thought Harry was it, so far, nobody is living up to that. I'm in no hurry. A divorce from accounting looked me up, I cleared it with Dennis before I asked her out. After a few dates, she indicated she just wanted a friends with benefits FWB relationship. The morning after I spent the night with her for the first time, Carly sent a text. Do you love her? None of your business. I still love you. I'm sorry. Too little too late. In the back of my mind, I can see you all watching my demise play out on Dateline. Leanne returned to work and was placed under the supervision of another manager. I do my best to avoid her. She has never said or done anything out again. The police didn't need me to cooperate to convict Harry. The security cameras provided everything they needed. I did appear at his sentencing to ask the court for lenience. He was given a suspended sentence, but he still has a felony conviction. Having FWB works for now, but I want a soulmate preferably one that understands that the intercourse required to resolve a conflict has no sexual connotation. Thanks to the user more and more for this incredible story. I can't believe Carly was so stupid to take her revenge by giving away her body for free. It feels like she was just waiting for the right moment. What do you guys think? What would your wife do in this situation?